Hi, my name is Johan Mora Valverde, and welcome to our Advocacy Stories for You, by You series. Um, today, we continue the series with Emily Ball, the mentor coordinator for CPAC, um, the Connecticut Parent Advocacy Center, and she serves a role on TTYAB, the Connecticut Youth Advisory Board. Emily, thank you for coming on to this video and giving time to share your story. Um, and do you mind just introducing yourself a little bit for those who will watch this video um, and will share this video with? Um, my name is Emily Ball, and um, I have been involved in disability advocacy work since I was very young, and when I'm not doing any of that, I love to read and play with my pets. All right, that's good, I like that. Um, and what type of pets do you have, Emily? I have two dogs and two cats. Nice, nice, love to hear it. So we're gonna start uh, today just with a couple of questions, and please uh, feel, free, feel free to share. Um, just a little bit more um, outside of the question, right? So we can have those who are watching this video and our viewers um, see a little bit more about what it means to be Emily um, and what type of challenges you had to overcome and how you got to the point where you got now uh, serving on a youth advisory board, being part of an advocacy center, what is that like? Um, so let's start first on advocacy, right? Um, and the work that you do. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself as in the work that you currently do today? Um, well, the whole reason that I got into this work in general was because I was born pretty much prematurely with a host of different health issues that led me to being um, diagnosed with a condition called cerebral palsy and I've used a wheelchair since um, I was five years old. And um, what led me to this journey of advocacy was just generally um, living with a disability. And it didn't really hit me till I was like 12 or 13 years old when I was introduced to this organization called Connecticut Cases of advocates where they teach you to be an advocate for yourself as a young adult with disabilities. And I really credit that to being one of the main forces in my uh, drive to be a um, disability advocate. Mm. Wow, well, that, that's great. Um, that's a great story and how how you started. And, and I want to ask, do you mind just talking a little bit more about the challenges that your disability presents? So you mentioned you have cerebral um, palsy. Can you describe what that is, what that means, and what challenges it presents? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, my I have um, cerebral palsy, which is a brain injury, like a disability caused by a brain injury that I sustained when I was born. And um, I basically need help with all of my activities of daily living. So I'm pretty dependent on other people to um, live the life that I do. Okay. So thank you for, for talking about what cerebral palsy is. Can you go back a little bit and tell us about what it meant to advocate when you were in school um, and did it come naturally to you? Um, when I was in school, in terms of my advocacy, I was like very like timid when it came to like asking my teachers for help regarding certain things because I really wanted to like blend in it wasn't until I got to be, it wasn't until I got involved with Connected Casa where I realized that even though I was only like a middle schooler, 
I still had the agency and empowerment to be able to advocate for myself within the school realm. And um, uh, it was from the time of eighth grade till the day I graduated high school, I was way more confident in like getting my need getting my needs across and just telling the adults around me what I needed and what I felt. Thank you for sharing that. And I would say um, when we talk to a lot of youth and young adults, those who join on our weekly youth chats uh, from 3.30 to 4, uh, which I'll include in the link in the description, uh, many youth talk about the challenges of what their disability presents. Um, so can we talk a little bit about how you overcame those challenges, whether in school, in work? Like, how did you overcome um, those a lot of, roadblocks? Okay. A lot of how I have overcome my challenges is just what I personally boil it down to is just my quick thinking. I had like, I'll see that, you know, I'm not able to get to something. So I usually would, I usually, back then I would have just like mapped out a little pl a plan in my head, like, okay, we can't reach that. So what can we move out of the way in order to um, access the item that we need or more abstractly, like what, what barriers do I need to break down in order to achieve this goal for myself? Thank you. And where did you find support? Did you have to seek it out or was it available? Um, I credit a lot of my support to the adult allies that were in, that were like in charge of the CASA group that I was a part of because like the, a few of them were adults with disabilities and I looked up to them and I wanted, you know, to, for them to not like for them to really see me as a capable young adult with a disability. So I, I really like credit them to their, of their encouragement and just their being nice and actually treating me like a human and not like a young child, like I was used to being treated as. And also another big influence I have to say would be my coworker, Michael Scanlon, who you have also um, interviewed in the past. Like I used to watch him on panels and uh, I was really inspired by his story and like once we got to be friendly a little bit, he gave me tips and that really built built up my confidence. Yes, Michael Scallon. Also, we interviewed in the past, as um, you mentioned, Emily, and part of this series. So if you're watching, um, take a look at our playlist and you can find Michael, who is youth coordinator for CPAC and also serves with Emily on CTY and the Youth Advisory. Now you mentioned CASA. So let, let's talk a little bit about that because we're hearing a lot of CASA, also now known as YASA. Um, can you talk about your role with them and what that group yeah. is? Yeah, CT CASA, which is the Connecticut chapter for the bigger organization, Youth as Self-Advocates. CT CASA is a Connecticut group of youth and young adults who like get together monthly to like interact with each other, but more importantly, do projects that are relevant to youth and young adults with disabilities. Like in the wake of the pandemic, we've really been focusing on telehealth and how youth can access that. And also things regarding uh, your mental health during this pandemic. And um, prior to the pandemic, a few years ago, we worked a lot on medical transition and uh, medical transition and uh, 
just writing letters to um, health professionals. So the and it was actually featured in a big uh, health conference in Connecticut. And so that was incredible that we got like it was so important that it was featured like at a big state conference like that. So that was one major thing that we've done. That's great. Yes. Um, and and go ahead. Did you have, want to share more? I am basic and I am basically like the young adult, like they're like adult allies, but they're I'm also an adult ally, but I'm more so like the youth a youth ally that can get on the the you the members of the organization's level. That's good to know. And that is another resource I'll include in the description. Um, another resource that I know you play a big part of, Emily, so I want you to speak a little bit more on that and the work that, how big the work is that you're doing, especially with telehealth. That's a resource I'll include as well. Definitely. And so just to, just to focus a little bit more back on, on a conversation about your experience and your advocacy and the challenges of your disability, what help have you received that you want to share with others? So back when I was a younger adult, when I was like 20, I was invited to um, take part in this advocacy class called Partners in Policymaking. It's this um, nine month class where you learn about disability history and all things related to disability advocacy. Like when I was like when I was younger, I was involved in CASA, but I really think that partners in policymaking really amped up my disability advocacy skills because it really showed me another side to everything in the disability world, really. Thank you for sharing that. And before we we close out this um, interview, again, which is great insight that you're coming with, and great resources that you're coming with, we really appreciate. Do you want to share something to any of the youth and young adults um, that are going to watch this video? Any advice, any last points, anything you feel um, at this point that you would like them to know? 100%. Um, I think something that I want you and young adults to know is that even though a lot of the adults in your lives may think, oh, you're just a kid, like, you know, they like, you know, because in my experience, adults have said like, oh, you're just a kid, you're like, you don't really understand or know, or, you know, when you become an adult, you're gonna, you, like, you don't, you don't, you don't know what's gonna happen in your life kind of thing and um, I just want them to know that even though you are you even though you are a young adult with disabilities you can still make the life for yourself that you want to and you know that advocacy is a really hard thing to do but it's also necessary to pave the way for like the generations after you. That is great. Thank you for those, for those words. And I would just say the resources that you shared um, with the Connecticut Youth Advisory Board, um, once again, we'll put it in the description of this video, the resources with YASA Youth SL Advocates, um, and as well as the work that you do as the uh, mentor coordinator with CPAC. Um, and I want to thank you again for your time. Um, even though we'll finish the video here, I would just say for those who are watching um, to please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have more videos like this coming up um, and more young adults, adult allies, and those who, who can share their story like Emily Ball in great insight and a great story um, coming soon. So if you want to see those videos first, um, subscribe to the Stand Parent Advocacy Network YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.